welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Danny, and this is Coffee Break with Danny, where we talk about all things vapid in life. Stuff that's not important, stuff that you don't need, but uh, stuff like makeup that is fun. So today we're gonna get ready together. Honestly, I don't remember what we talked about in this video, and I probably have lipstick on my teeth right now, but that's just how we roll here in the Coffee Break hood. So today we're going to do this rose gold inspired makeup look that I saw on Kathleen Light's Instagram. I really loved it, but you guys know that when I find makeup inspiration, it never comes out the way that it looks. Um, so I just, I call it inspiration because um, it's like I, I meant to make it look that way and it ended up looking this way. Usually I like it, sometimes I don't, but I always record it, so. <laughs> Thank you for watching. And if it's been a minute that you've come by Coffee Break headquarters, uh, this is the new hairstyle we're rocking for the summer. I really like it. It's taken some getting used to. I don't know how to style it quite yet because it's so short that I kind of want to burn myself with a curling iron. So I think what's going to happen is I'm going to need to learn how to style it with a flat iron. Yeah, I'm gonna have to be that girl that learns how to do that little flipperoo, twisteroo with the flat iron. So if you have any tips, I'd really appreciate that. But anyway, if you're here for the amazing, highly educational, amazing, life-changing makeup content for this channel, then all you have to do is keep on watching. Alright guys, let's go ahead and get started. It is so bizarre sitting here. Sitting in this chair, sitting in front of the camera, sitting here with my new hair. Alright you guys, so with my hair, I was going for like Jessica Alba, golden, warm, bob vibes. Um, and I feel like I'm giving myself more uh, Sarah from the Dainty Pear vibes. If you guys don't follow Sarah on Instagram, she is adorable. She's kind of one of my friends in my head. I have too many friends in my head, you guys. Anyway, point is, this short hair, we're doing it. I love it. Every time I sit in Katie's chair and I give her inspiration, she leaves me blown away. A lot of you have been very vocal about your disdain for my haircut and how you don't like it and it's really affecting your life. Um, but I mean, I can't, I can't put it back. So maybe it'll grow back, you guys, I promise. Um, today we are going to get ready together and I saw this picture that Kathleen posted on her Instagram and it totally gave me makeup inspiration, which it's been a hot minute since my makeup, um, like excited bug gets me. That was very ESL. <laughs> it's been a while that the makeup bug get, like bites me, you know, that I'm like, I want to try that. So she did this look. I know it looks super neutral, doesn't it? Like, I feel like the camera's not really picking up color or doing it justice, but it's a very rose gold nude glow everywhere um, makeup. Very natural, very beautiful. Those are my favorite looks that she does. Um, and so that's what we're gonna try today. We're not gonna copy it, we're just using it as like frame of reference or guidance. And then once we um, finish, then we can let our hair down and you um, might not feel so disgusted with how short it is. You're gonna hear lawn mowers all day. It just, it is what it is. It's spring in Dallas and everyone cuts their grass like twice a day. It's very obnoxious. So let's roll with it. All right, you know what we're gonna use and it's only so that I can talk about it for a little bit. We're gonna use the Milk Hydro Grip Primer. Um, Milk is a brand that I liked for quite a bit. Um, they have those, um, liquid or cream metallic eyeshadows that lawnmower is making me want to go out there and like spank him <laughs> you know like stop anyway um so their metallic cream shadows are some of my favorites the blur stick is one of my absolute favorites but um i don't know i kind of just can't get behind the brand i don't i just can't get behind their marketing almost like two-faced you know I, I i don't understand i feel like a lot of kids um, follow YouTube and beauty videos and the beauty community and uh, I, I don't know I feel like a social responsibility to how we market things now should children be using makeup probably not but if we can as humans partake in the rearing of children um, in a helpful I don't know morally responsible kind of way you know if you're a grown-up and you make certain choices i don't care you're a grown-up you know but 
when we're given the opportunity or the stage to influence um, younger, like the younger generation, I kind of take that job really seriously. Anyway, long story short, I love the blur stick. I love their cream eyeshadows. Um, don't believe the hype. I use this primer. I have an oily T-zone and the normal everywhere else. I don't know what they're talking about, how like super grippy it is and it makes your foundation last for like seven days and all that stuff. Like it really didn't do anything spectacular, magical or fantastical, life-changing. Is it good? Yeah, but um, are other primers better? Probably. <laughs> so it's good, but I, I've i seen it hyped up a lot recently and I'm like, hmm, interesting. So now we're going to move on to concealer. All right, you guys, so from the time I put on the primer and wind to now, there's been about 20 minutes that I decided to wait because the landscapers were getting really, really loud. And as much as this camera drowns out a lot of the like exterior noise, that I feel like was not filtered out. Anyway, we're going in with the NARS Soft Matte uh, Creamy Concealer. And then I thought that we would use a little bit of this new foundation from Pacifica. I wanna update you guys on something kind of exciting. So I don't know if you guys know Logical Harmony. She has a really big um, cruelty-free uh, blog, written blog. She also has a YouTube channel. Um, she and I are like digital friends. And she did this post recently on Instagram. Um, I don't even remember the context of her post, but under it, I told her, oh, I remember. She did something like, her post was something along the lines of how to not be misled by companies that are misrepresenting themselves or you might think they're cruelty free when they really aren't. So I've been wanting to go cruelty free for a very long time. Not necessarily non-toxic beauty, but definitely cruelty free. Um, and I feel like every time that I sit down to attempt it, I fail miserably because that 1% hoarder in me wants to come out and can't bring myself to get rid of some of my favorite beauty products. So as much as I'd like to go cruelty free, I know myself and I'm cognizant of the fact that I am physically incapable of doing it on my own. <laughs> so under her post, I said, hey, what if you come out to Dallas and you declutter my entire makeup collection and only leave cruelty free brands in my background? She was like, okay, when do you want to do it? And I was like, really? <laughs> so I thought that was really, really exciting. Now, currently my home looks like a disaster zone because we're having like little projects done around the house, like little minor remodels. Um, and so I'm like, let me get through this madness that is my home. Um, and then we'll definitely plan something maybe in the early fall. So I'm very excited about that. Now I know she works with her, I don't know if he's her boyfriend or husband, um, but they work together. Like he does all her videography and photography. Um, so he's probably coming too, which means that the video quality might be way better. <laughs> since um that's not my forte i think this is my color i feel like i feel like i should just go for it right it looks like my color so this is the new foundation from pacifica it's called the alight clean foundation 100 percent vegan oil free anti-shine and satin finish you guys know my thing, my little shtick lately with foundation has been no foundation. So um, anything that's going to be full coverage or matte is not something that I'm going to like. Like automatically, I'm not going to like something that is going to be matte and full coverage. Just because it's not my vibe, you know? <laughs> vibe. I've been saying vibe a lot lately as a joke because one of my best friends, Beto, um, is always like, oh, I hate when people overuse the word vibe. And I'm like, just put out the vibe and they'll stop. Um, two of my girlfriends, you guys, two of my girlfriends are pregnant and they're both having boys. So pretty soon it's going to be boys all over the place. The cool thing is one of those girlfriends already has two girls. Um, so she's finally getting her boy, which is really cool. Uh, Beto is also having a boy. Mm, this foundation smells good. Definitely not fragrance free. I don't think cause it smells really good. But Pacifica is one of the healthier, cleaner beauty brands, and I love that it's available at Target. Um, so 
excited to be using this. I hope it doesn't oxidize because right now it's my exact color, even though you can't tell because I'm, I'm blinding you guys with my makeup mirror. So I'm sick again. <laughs> I feel like every time we talk, I'm sick. Something is wrong. Oh, there are the landscapers again. They probably, they heard my vibe. <laughs> They picked up on my angry vibe. Um, yeah, I'm sick again, man. I just can't catch a break. Um, Parker was sick. Now I'm sick. Um, my throat is killing me. So if you all of a sudden hear me with candy in my mouth, it's one of those awful, disgusting, taste horrible chloroseptic or whatever cough drops. Those things work, man. They're good. Especially if you don't have time to go to the doctor and get antibiotics. <laughs> At least they'll help with the throat pain. So I'm really liking this foundation. It looks like full coverage, but natural, like a natural full coverage where it still allows your natural flaws. All right, you guys, let's just become resolute to the idea that this get ready with me is going to be a mess. Martin's about to start barking. Just wait for it. Man, I really like this new foundation. You know what it reminds me of? It reminds me a lot of the um, Osmosis Performance whatever. Such a good foundation. That's one of my like top three foundations ever. Now we're gonna go in with um, a concealer. Let's do Macadamia. I like to do Macadamia on the darkest parts of my um, panda eyes. Like right here in this little, this little nook. All right, guys, there's going to be a triple homicide today in my neighborhood. I will not confirm or deny that it's me, and I will not confirm or deny that it was landscapers. Um, <laughs> I'm really trying, I'm really trying, really trying to stay calm, to remain calm and appreciate that I'm going to have beautiful landscape to look at for the next four days before they come back again. Um, but it's driving me bonkers. There should be, like, these magical plants that just stay perfect all year round, not fake ones, <laughs> that don't need to be cut, especially in the spring, man. They make such a mess and they grow so fast. I know my landscaper comes once a week, but he comes during the week, not on the weekends, which is when I work. So it's not so bad. Anyway, what were we talking about? Probably the vibe, huh? <laughs> Oh, the foundation, man, that foundation's awesome. And I really hope it doesn't oxidize because it's such a good shade match for me. Um, that was in the color, let's see, 26 neutral medium, 26 mm. There's a lot of colors too. I think there's like, I don't know, 20 different shades. Do you guys wanna talk about something sad? So I'm trying to like mentally prepare um, for Tamisha's visit and kind of get an eyeball or just a general concept of brands that I really like that I'm gonna have to say goodbye to. <sighs> My favorite translucent powder, Laura Mercier. I don't think Laura Mercier is cruelty free. I really hope I'm wrong, but I've tried to look it up and it never looks like, like they are. So my favorite eyeshadow stick of all time, Burnish Bronze, their powder. I don't know how I'm gonna deal you guys. But in the meantime that I have to deal, we'll keep using it because we don't wanna waste it, you know? <laughs> anyway, I told you guys that my house is under like baby construction right now. It's not really construction, it's just painting. Um, we're redoing the kitchen. So we're repainting or refinishing all the cabinets. And when they do that, they're also going to paint the kitchen and they're also gonna paint the breakfast nook. Um, then I ended up moving my office. So this is my studio. It's a bedroom in my house um, and it was divided in half. So I would film on this side and then I would edit and take calls and do all the legal and admin work on the other side of the room. And then I had my backdrop for like B-roll footage or try on footage. I'd have that downstairs where the formal dining room is. Now, huge American myth is that you need a formal dining room because you use that bedroom like twice a year. The furniture in there is usually three times more expensive than regular furniture, and it's just a waste of space, you know? Anyway, so 
I'm over here just over powdering, don't mind me. So after I got divorced, I never replaced the formal dining room furniture. I didn't see the need. I wasn't about to start hosting Christmas or Thanksgiving anytime soon. So I was like, what's the point? So I just started to uh, put my backdrops and lighting and stuff down there. It would really bother me that if someone came to my house, the first thing they saw was like random stuff crammed into a peacock color blue, uh, room. So I needed to do something about it. I wanted to optimize my space, but I wanted my house to still feel like a home. Um, and not a home like, my house has always been a place where I do what I want and I put stuff wherever I want it. And I want it to remain that way. But I also want it to look like a home, not a business. You know what I'm saying? So having those backdrops down there was like kind of yuck for me. So what I ended up doing was moving my desk downstairs. So now when you walk in, it looks like an office, which I love. And it's big enough to have two offices or two desks or three desks, you know, like someone else could have a desk there. The kids could have a homework desk there with a the computer. Um, so there's potential. Now it's an open room, so it definitely needs to be closed off somehow, but not where it closes off the house and makes it smaller, just where it creates some sort of room qualities or privacy. Now disclaimer, I'm an awful interior decorator. I'm awful at picking out colors. I'm awful at picking up furniture. It's not my forte. In fact, my ex-husband would tease me a lot about it, how like I was super bad at it. I have to agree. It's not my thing. Like I commit to a few colors that I like and I just assume everything that are those colors looks good. So um, I have a couple of ideas of what's going down in my house, but um, I honestly don't know how it's going to play out. But if you want to see how it plays out, make sure you watch my weekend vlogs because that's kind of where I'm documenting it. That's where I share who my painter is and the paint colors that I picked out and what they're doing to the cabinets and the barn doors where I got them and all that stuff. So if you want to see the progress, I'll be talking about it in my vlogs. If you want to make fun of my interior decorating, I'll be talking about it. <laughs> um, anyway, so I'm looking forward to that. So my kitchen's not going to be done for probably a week. I say even longer because um, those are a lot of cabinets. Although I really hope it doesn't take that long because being out of a kitchen is so uncomfortable, especially because um, some of the dog's meds are in the refrigerator and it's twice a day and then you know we have little kids that require snacks and milk and juice and all that stuff and the coffee maker I don't know I like to cook so it's never fun to be out of your kitchen it's a main room you know so anyway after um, that's done we'll probably paint um, the study I guess, I, I guess it's a study now, right? Like the office. We'll paint that. I really like the peacock blue. I just don't feel like it goes with my vibe anymore. <laughs> we should play a game every time I say vibe. <laughs> every time I say vibe, do something. <laughs> Legal. <laughs> anyway, so this foundation doesn't seem to like either the primer or that setting powder because it's looking a little crepey on my forehead, you probably can't see it because it's so far away, but I almost want to say it's the primer because it's like a gel primer. Um, usually with a powder, you know right away. But I don't know, you see like the buildup of where maybe I didn't blend out um, the primer good enough. So it does sort of like a, the best way I can describe it is do you guys remember when you see really dry dirt or like a desert and it has those cracks of like almost like a like like um I don't know crusts of 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 mud that's dried and then it has the cracks in between? That's how it looks, but really really small. So, unless you get really really close to my face, you won't be able to see it, but I can see it and that bothers me enough. I'm trying not to make this video too long because my throat is killing me but I haven't done this type of video in a long time, so y'all know mama loves to chat. 
I feel like this taupe eye pencil is picking up some gray tones now that I changed my hair color. Like before it was really pretty. I feel like I, I really liked how it looked. But now with like the lighter golden in the hair, I feel like it's picking up some gray, some gray tones. So I'm not too excited about that. We're gonna go in with some eyebrow gel. This is from Maybelline, which I also don't think is cruelty free. <laughs> I'm not making very good life choices right now, you guys. Do you guys ever have like a crazy eyebrow hair like this one that just full on sticks up and out? That happens to me depending on how I sleep and no matter what I do, how much moisturizer, gel, uh, eyebrow gel I use, it's just going to stick up all day. And sometimes when I'm not having it, I just pull it out. I just yank it out with some tweezers. I know. Savage, right? like you don't want to cooperate I'm gonna kill you off speaking of killing off he is not cooperating like he is full-on standing up bye <laughs> all right now we are going to do um contour and blush yeah let's do contour and blush so for contour I'm going to use the same that I always use the Charlotte Tilbury oh no please tell me they're cruelty free this is like my favorite, favorite contour slash bronzer of all time. Like this is the only one I would use if I never had a choice again in my life. Oh man, I wonder if it's cruelty free. I'm gonna have to Google this. I'm gonna have to turn you guys off for a second because I need to get on the Google. Let me see. Let me just go to Tamisha's blog. She has a really handy list like right on the front. Charlotte Tilbury is on there. Okay, awesome. <laughs> I don't have to surrender to our love. Okay, so I don't have to give up my favorite bronzer. That's a good idea to just overdo it. I mean, go for it, Danny, since you can wear it proudly, you know? Put a little bit on our forehead. I love when I lighten my hair because it makes me look tan. You knew that was coming. Like, why, why are you acting surprised? Now we're gonna do blush. And you think for blush, we'll go with um, orgasm because why not? Um, Orgasm has this new Orgasm line. I think it's exclusive to the NARS website and to Sephora. And so basically it's all the things Orgasm. <sighs> Here we go again. I was all on my pontification about our responsibility with the youth and I'm just saying orgasm like 47 times. So orgasm is one of NARS's most popular products. It was probably the most popular product for a long time when Kim Kardashian was all about that uh, Turkish delight life, you know what I'm saying? Like way back then when the lip gloss caps were like matte and had that little rim around them. Do you guys remember? How old am I? Okay, yeah, most of you probably don't remember. <laughs> But um, this is a cult beauty product, you know, cult. Everyone loves it, everyone knows about it, everyone's heard about it. I don't know how popular it is anymore, but I really like it. I like it so much that I can't stop putting it on. Danny, back away from the blush. Back away from the blush. I have a date tonight, you guys, with my boyfriend. That sounded weird. <laughs> We're going on date night tonight, um, and so, I guess I could overdo my blush because why not? Before we do highlighter, I'm going to do my eyes. It's not like I, it will matter too much if I have fallout because the colors we're gonna use are really, really light. But you know, better to be safe than sorry. We're gonna grab a couple colors from a few e.l.f. palettes. Um, this is the Rose Gold Nude. And I'm just gonna take this little vanilla color here and that's going to be our brow bone highlight. Oh, that's pretty. That totally reminds me of the color that's in the Sweet Peach Mattes. Sweet Peach Match Mattes. Just Peachy Mattes. <laughs> One of my top three palettes, and I can't remember the name. Hi, uh, you guys. Such a pretty color. Go Elf with these eyeshadows. Okay, then we're going to go in with. This is too orange. How about these over here? Hmm, that's a little too mauve. What am I doing with my life? Oh, let's do this one. Ooh, almost dropped it. Let's do that one right there. 
I'm gonna have to clean off my blending brush. Talk about cleaning off my blending brush for a second. So like 10 years ago, I did a video where I talked about how I cleaned my makeup brushes. And in that video, I talk about the Viramona color switch. So all of these China companies have stolen clips of me from that video, which by the way, my makeup looks amazing. Um, and they're trying to sell their knockoff. And I'm upset, not because of my content, because y'all know that this isn't quality, like life-changing type content, right? It's just, it's for fun. I'm upset that a brand like Viramona is being misrepresented, or rather their products are being used to sell a fake. That bothers me. I know I should be bothered that they're stealing me, right? But it just, why are people like that? You know, why are people so, what's even the word? Like, I, I, I don't even know what, what word to, to use. Like, why do you have to misrepresent? Like, why do you have to use my content to sell your knockoff that you're saying is like product A when it's really product Z? It's like, just promote your product with your person in your way and I'm sure it'll still work the same, but why do you have to steal? I don't understand the, like, I don't, I don't, I, I, I fail to understand how that at all even remotely makes any sense whatsoever because I'd want to promote my own stuff. You know, if it's good, let it speak for itself kind of thing, right? But kind of riding on the coattails of someone else or using someone else without even permission is annoying. And the fact that I've left several comments where I'm like, hey, I'm not giving you permission to use my likeness and that's not the product I'm talking about. I'm talking about and I at Viramona. And they remove my comment. So they know they're doing something they shouldn't be and that drives me even more bananas. So I don't know. I don't know why people do that. I'll never understand. I'm taking this really light shimmery pink color here and um, this brush by Zoeva and I'm hoping it doesn't get all over my face and I'm just gonna blend it from the lid and just carry it up. So start at your lid and then bring it up. And I think in the picture, Kathleen had it just really soft and glowy. It wasn't just like uh, limited to the lid. It just She just carried it out. It looked really, really pretty. Very soft, very blown out, very delicate. There was no intensifying of the crease or anything. At least not in the picture, the way it seemed. So again, start at the lid, bring it up. So do you guys want to talk about date night? You guys have to jump in on this conversation and not make me feel alone in this world. So Parker and I were sitting at our dinner table, um, we're talking and he's like, hey, do you think we should go on a date this week? Because we were talking about how we're kind of in a rut, you know, we're just doing life. I'm going to go in with this darker pink here and see how that looks. We're kind of in a rut, we're just kind of doing life and we really haven't gotten excited or planned to go on a date. And so um, I was like, yeah, sure, totally, that sounds exciting. He's like, yeah, we can dress up, we can look forward to it, we'll plan for it and we'll do it. I'm like, okay, cool. I said, but here's the problem. I usually have this like running list of restaurants or bars or whatever that I wanna check out on my phone and that's kinda how we check out new joints is like I'll see it on Instagram or I'll see it on the news or whatever, a commercial, and then I'll add it to the list and then we go check it out, right? But I was like, I don't have any any new places on my list. There's nothing that, you know, I have to say, I am impressed with these e.l.f. eyeshadows because they're not making a mess on my face. So impressed. It might have something to do with this magical Zoeva brush. Um that you guys know I rave and rave and rave about. I wish it was so much easier to find. Um, and so I was like, I, I don't have anything on my list, nothing new that, you know, I think we should check out or that I've been meaning to, you know, try their tacos. <laughs> um, and 
I was like, nothing new, but, but I've really wanted to go to this one place. I just, I don't want to tell you about it because I know you're going to laugh or you're going to give me grief about it because Parker's a big griller. Like his grip, he loves his grill more than I do. But in, in his defense, I love In-N-Out more than him. So it's kind of like that. Like this grill is his In-N-Out. And so um, when it comes down to high quality steak and chicken and grilling, he would much rather and actually enjoys grilling himself than going to a steak restaurant, right? And so I was like, well, I don't want to tell you because you're gonna be like, well, it's gonna be so much easier if we just grill at home and the meat will be better and it's not cheap steak, blah, blah, blah. And he's like, first of all, I don't talk like that. <laughs> Second of all, what place are you talking about? And I was like, you guys can't laugh either. This is where I need you to chime in. I was like, I really want to go to Outback. <laughs> Outback is a nice, Outback is a really nice restaurant if you're like in high school and college, right? Like that's a nice steakhouse. But once you're grown up, you have a career, you have kids, you want to go to a nice steakhouse like Fleming's, Silver Fox, you know, places like that. So for me to say I want to go to Outback, <laughs> I thought he was going to laugh at me and be like, you are crazy. Now I have a story as to why I like Outback, but that's a story for another day. Um, and I was like, I, I want to go, I want to go to Outback. And he's like, I love Outback. <laughs> so he goes, I'll take you to Outback, but we have to dress up. Should we make a reservation? <laughs> so you guys have to tell me if you and your significant other have a place that is like your hot date night, your fancy date night, but isn't really so fancy. Do you see where I'm getting at? Like a lot of you guys commented, I don't remember what video it was, but there was one comment that really stood out to me that I really liked that said, me and my husband go to Whataburger every Valentine's Day. We make a reservation, we dress up, and we eat at Whataburger. And I love that. Those are the type of memories that you cherish, right? So for Parker to get excited about going to Outback, which is a restaurant that is really special to me, and he's like, you have to dress up, and I'm very excited. Like this morning, he was even like, date night tonight you know <laughs> so um it's exciting it's exciting to be excited about something that may seem so minimal or trivial or whatever but it's special anyway so what's your spot do you and your significant other dress up to go eat cheddar bay biscuits do you just just tell me panda express mcdonald's i don't know what is it uh black eyed pea oh god they're cornbread you guys <sighs> the best texas roadhouse i love that place <laughs> yes i'm really digging this eye look you guys i think the only thing i'm gonna do now is use my vera mona now i need to do this instead of this in the video i need to do this so people don't steal my footage <laughs> i'm gonna use my color switch to clean this off and i'm gonna dip a roo into this movie shade right here this palette really reminds me of um the Naked 3, the rose gold one. Are they going to discontinue and revive that one too? Hmm. Still salty about the Naked Reloaded, aren't I? <laughs> I don't know why I like it. Um, I'm so like resistant to change sometimes. Like when it comes to change, like my hair, I'll go sit in the chair and be like, chop it off and paint it blue, dye it blue. But when it comes to other stuff, I'm like mm, pumping the brakes the whole time. Very resistant, very adamant. So yeah, that color is really pretty. This shade actually reminds me of my favorite color in that Makeup Forever palette that I always use. It is discontinued. It was limited edition, I believe. How pretty is that? Okay, you guys, I have taken up way too much of your time. I'm gonna jump off camera and do my lashes and then we'll come back to do highlighter and lips. All right, you guys, so I did my lashes with this magical, amazing, wonderful mascara from Essence, the Instant 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 volume boost is this cruelty free i feel like i have to break up with all my beauty brands i don't know if essence is cruelty free should we look it up i'm just gonna just gonna bow my head focus on lining my lips instead so in that picture that i used as inspiration kathleen's lips look more nude than her eyes her eyes look more pink 
And like I said, it's inspiration. Like when can I ever copy a makeup tutorial and make it look the same? So I lined my lips with Shea Moisture's um, liner in medium. I think it comes in light, medium, deep. Um, it's supposed to be like the nude for your skin tone. I have all of them <laughs> and I like all of them. So I'm going to top it with, and I can't decide yet, so I'm gonna do this test on camera with you guys. I'm going to top it with either Elf's Pout Perfector, which is probably one of my top three favorite lip glosses of all time, or Sophia, no, Sylvia from Shea Moisture. This is more pink, this is more peach, so I don't know if it's going to kind of throw off my eyes a little bit. See how this one's like way too peach? Yeah, I think we're going to go with Elf. A lot of you say you hate this lip gloss, like, hey, I bought it on your recommendation, and it's literally the worst lip gloss of my life, so... <laughs> It's, it's definitely in my top three. I really, really, really like it. See what I mean? Isn't it like the most amazing lip gloss ever? And if you use like a lighter lip liner, because I know the nude that I used was pretty brown. If you use a lighter one, it's even prettier. But, you know, I was trying to mix it up, do things a little differently. Just kidding, I got lazy. If I hadn't gotten lazy, I would have gone in with like Max Soar instead. And I think it would look better. Should we just change it? Oh man, I don't know. Should we? Should we change it? Let's change it. All right, you guys. We're doing this again. Look how brown that lip liner is. I didn't think this through, y'all. So I'm doing the remnants of my foundation to kind of cancel out that leftover color. Now the remnants of the powder to prolong the wear of the lip liner. We still haven't done highlighter, by the way, which is one of my favorite things on the planet. Um, so this is Max Soar. It's more of like a mauve rose shade. See? What a difference. It like kind of pulls the eyeshadow more. Pulls, you know what I'm saying. All right, so now that's a little more pink. Same gloss. That'll tie in really good too. The shimmery lid and we don't have to use as much gloss because we don't we're not trying to convert the color you know oh so much better I'm so glad I listened to you guys now we're gonna do highlighter for highlighter I got this new palette from makeup revolution and this is the chocolate elixir glow this reminds me exactly of Mac superb which is one of the most beautiful pink highlighters on the planet. Do you see that? I'm scared it might be a little too metallic, but oh, it's so lovely. I think we're gonna go in with the dark one. Let's see how that looks. Isn't that pretty? It's so soft. Look at that. It almost feels like a blush topper because it's not so, um, pearl or champagne you know it's not too it's glowy it's just not light which i really like oh that's so pretty so it's not quite exactly like max superb but i would still get this one. Oh man i like it we're gonna go in with the light shade for the rudolph oh <laughs> oh my god <laughs> not what i was going for how do i take it off <laughs> Send help, you guys. Send help. Oh my gosh. I don't like that color. <laughs> I don't like this one. That's like silver. I'm just going to go in with the pink. Sorry, pink. Sorry that I disparaged you. Oh, I can't stop putting it on, you guys. It's so pretty. Look at that. You know, that's as, that's as good as it's going to get, y'all. All right, you guys. That's it for this Get Ready With Me. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. Like any and all my videos, all the products that I used, all the stuff that's on my face, on my body, on my neck, will be listed and linked in the description box below of this video. Just a little update. According to YouTube, and this is something that I'm probably going to add to all of my videos here on out. According to YouTube, if you guys do not have that little bell icon clicked twice you don't get notified when i post a video now if you're someone that's like hmm danny hasn't posted a video in a while it might be true or it might just be because you aren't one of the few that gets selected to get a notification so basically youtube decides on its own who gets notified of new content 
So it's kind of whack, but it's kind of lame, but that's just the rules. So if you don't have the bell selected twice, like clicked twice, um, you won't get a notification. YouTube just kind of takes it upon itself to be like, oh, this person watches all of Danny's videos, so I'll remind them. But if you're super busy with life and existing, like most of us, and you skip a video here or there, um, YouTube takes it upon itself to decide that you don't want to watch these videos and you don't get notified. So if that's important to you, it's just a little heads up. Anyway, that's it. I love you guys so much, and you know what to do. If you found this video useful, entertaining, and learned something, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. And until next time, this coffee break is over. Bye, guys!